This video will talk about essential plant nutrients and fertilizer use in nursery production. What plants are made of? We will talk about what is in plants, the nutrients, macronutrients, and micronutrients, nutrient uptake processes, nutrient allocation processes, and whether plant nutrients are mobile or immobile in the plant. First of all, what is in the plant? The plant is made up of 70 to 80 percent water, 20 to 22 percent organic matter, and the final 3 to 15 percent are minerals. Next we will talk about essential nutrients and the role in plant growth. The plant is required to have carbon in the form of carbon dioxide and oxygen and they come from the atmosphere and the soil pore spaces which also contain water and oxygen and the plant nutrients. Nutrients are often split into two categories, macronutrients and micronutrients. Let us first talk about macronutrients. They are called macronutrients because they are present in plant tissue in larger amounts in the plant. Macronutrients are present in dry tissue and in most lab reports they are listed as a percentage of plant dry weight. These macronutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium, and magnesium. The best way to remember these is by the phrase Nancy Peterson's kite sails calmly and magnificently. Micronutrients are needed in small amounts in the plant. The micronutrients are iron, manganese, copper, boron, zinc, molybdenum, chlorine, and nickel. A way to remember this is fertilizer management cuts back the zone of most clutter nicely. Nutrient uptake processes. So how are these essential nutrients taken up by the plant? Plant nutrients are taken up by the young, actively growing roots, which have root hairs and may also have mycorrhizae. The essential nutrients are taken up in channels and root cell membranes that are specific for the nutrient in question. There are specific uptake pathways for each nutrient. They are going from the soil into the plant, going from cell to cell through the plant. Active and passive transport are biological processes that move oxygen, water, and nutrients into cells and remove waste products. Active transport requires energy from the plant because it is the movement of biochemicals against an electrochemical gradient. Passive transport moves biochemicals down an electrochemical gradient, so it does not require energy. Nutrient uptake is an active process. A plant has to spend energy to take up nutrients. Another aspect of nutrient uptake is that it is selective. Selective uptake means that plants can distinguish one nutrient from another through selective channels that are in the plant cell membranes so that, for example, Calcium is taken up through calcium channels, magnesium is taken up through magnesium channels, and potassium is taken up through potassium channels, etc. Now, some of these channels, though, can't identify the correct nutrient from another. We can create magnesium deficiencies by applying too much calcium. These channels can take up some of these other nutrients as well if they are predominant in the soil rhizosphere. Once the nutrient is taken up into the plant, the root system must maintain an ionic balance. This means that when ions like nitrate or phosphate are taken up, hydroxide ions are released from the plant in exchange and this creates an increase of pH in the rhizosphere. Other ions, such as potassium and calcium and ammonium, which are positively charged, will result in a release of a hydrogen ion, and this will cause acidification of the root zone. Now, once these nutrients are taken up into the plant, their mobility is the next thing to consider. Nutrient allocation processes, mobile nutrients, immobile nutrients. 
Mobility means that the plants can move the nutrients upward in the xylem from the roots. But a plant that has mobile nutrients also means that those nutrients can move from older tissue through the phloem to younger growth. The mobile nutrients include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, molybdenum, nickel, and chlorine. If nutrient deficiencies occur, then deficiency symptoms will occur in the oldest growth because the nutrients can be mobilized from the older leaves and be directed to the new growth at the top of the plant. Now those nutrients which are immobile in the phloem include calcium, sulfur, iron, manganese, copper, boron, zinc, and molybdenum. If insufficiencies occur in the root soil, what happens is the nutrient deficiencies will be expressed in the new growth because they cannot be remobilized from the old growth and translocated into the new growth. So these nutrient deficiencies will always occur in the new growth. This is what you learned in this module.